I'll go ahead and explain something. I'll also dispel a lot of myths about Hive and go on to explain to you as to how do you actually use Hive in order to do data analytics. So guys, even before we get started, right, the first thing I want to know is for the first five minutes, next five minutes, let's discuss as to what is your understanding about big data analytics using Hive and from then on I'll move on to explain uh, what, what I believe is big data analytics using Hive. Okay, so, Sudeep, is Hive a query language similar to SQL? Yes, Sudeep, Hive is a query language similar to SQL and that's called as HQL, Hive query language. Trying to understand real-time usage. Okay, Sachin, how, how about the rest, guys? Now, Abhijit, Abhishek, Ajit, Akshata, Amarnath, Andavar, okay, why it's called as big data? Okay, Siva, we'll, we'll uncover that as well as to why it's called big data. Do you use Python with Hive? Absolutely, we can use Python with Hive. If you're interested in that, uh, you know, I, can, I can give you some example as well. Okay, Kalyan, hey Kalyan learning how to use queries for big data. Okay, okay Madhusudan, want to know practical use in different industries is Deepak. Okay Deepak, what about R? Uh, you can use uh, Python, in con uh, you can use Hive in conjunction with R, but that's not uh, what we are going to cover today. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to cover things from big data analytics using Hive. Now I, Hive can be integrated with R, Hive can be integrated with Python, Hive can be integrated with Java. So Hive can be integrated with almost all language for which interface has been built. But we are, we will not be talking about R today, Abhijit. Okay, what's the difference between Hive and Peak? Okay, so the, uh, I'll, I'll try to ch touch upon that as well. The two are different languages, but built with the same intention. Peak was built by Yahoo, whereas Hive was uh, created by Facebook and they have similar properties and they do similar stuff as well but then there are uh, small differences as to why one should be used for one type of data processing and, and others should be used for other type of processing. Uh, if I have time I'll discuss about the difference between Peak and Hive as well. Niharika says uh, her expectation from the class is to just get, get basics of in big data. I'm looking to switch platform. I'm currently working in open system and want to check if big data is the right move. Okay Niharika. Why is it preferred compared to existing SQL? Okay, Kumar, uh, it, uh, I'll, I'll explain that as to what's the difference between uh, HiveQL and uh, you know normal SQLs. I'll explain that as well. Uh, Hive is similar to SQL, just that it's a schema on read. Okay, excellent. Whereas SQL is schema on write. You already know that answer, so we'll we'll uh, uncover more of that a little later, guys. One more minute. If you want to type in something and then I'll get started. Okay, If you want to type in your expectation from the class or your understanding, uh, uh, from you, from what is your understanding of what I've, I'd be able to put it in uh, better terms. Sudeep says, please explain in layman language. Absolutely, Sudeep, if this will be completely layman language. It, it will start from zero, so you can be rest assured of that. Basic idea about big data. Okay, Amarnath, moving data in and out of five. Okay, Sachin. Introduction to big data and best ways to learn more. Okay, Aksata. Sanjay here. I am expecting to get a good grounding in Hadoop. Okay, why Hive? Okay, excellent, Balaji. So 30 more seconds, and I see lots and lots of questions coming in. Okay, could you please also cover read on schema feature of Hive and how unstructured data in Hive is different from MongoDB? Okay, absolutely, and so I'll cover that as well. Uh, Vishal, something about security in Hadoop will help. Okay, Vishal, I think. Uh, uh, I will not be able to touch base on security in in Hadoop and and Hive right now because of time constraints, Vishal, uh, which we can do some other time, I guess. Okay, but I'll 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 try to at least touch base on that. Okay, hey, isn't Pig a programming language and Hive a query language to query the big databases? Okay, Pig is uh, a data flow language. Pig by definition is a data flow language, and uh, Hive is a query language okay but then they were meant to do the same stuff they were created with the same intention and hence the functionalities are quite similar we will see the differences later on 
Vamsi, I am working on integration platform. Want to know how big data training, uh, data training for my advantage. Okay, SQL is for structured data. Hive is for unstructured data. Okay, Aksata. So there we go, guys. Uh, we have run out of time on uh, taking your questions. So let me uh, let me get started straight away. Edwin says, I'm currently studying CIS database management, but my school does not offer any Hadoop courses. Why are so many so many schools not offering Hadoop even with its popularity? I still don't understand the fact as to why uh, schools are not offering Hadoop. They are supposed to because there's huge demand for Hadoop and there are so there's so less supply. I, I think they will eventually come up with this uh, uh, you know with this initiative to teach Hadoop. But right now, I don't think apart from uh, some of the main schools, uh, none of them are teaching Hadoop. People do go ahead and teach uh, big data analytics, but that's more from perspective of uh, you know mining data from slicing dicing data it, it's all it's all uh, data perspective they go ahead and teach uh, uh, your python they go ahead and teach r in order to do data analytics but not hadoop as such okay so they have udacity intro course in hadoop uh, and map produced by cloudera i think it's good start yeah kumar for a starter that's good but uh, it, it does not give you a lot of uh, insight in uh, into what actually Hadoop is. I mean, for a starter, yes, that, that's that's a good place. Hi, okay, Rohini here. I would like to learn the basic queries using Hadoop. Okay, guys, let's let's get started. Okay, thank you guys, thank you guys for putting in your uh, questions and your expectation from the class. Uh, now, let me go ahead and tell you as to what big data analytics. Let me explain to you as to what big data analytics is, is right? That we're using Hive. Okay, now your instructor of by now you would have known my name, uh, you would have gotten my name, my name is Yogendra and uh, I've been working in this industry for a very, very long time. Uh, it's, it's been almost a decade and a half, right, even more than that. I've been work, I've, I started working on various technologies, started started working from Java to Oracle to uh, lately when, when there was, uh, you know, when when big data initially started, that's when I moved into big data, and from since then I've been working on not just big data. I've worked on big data. I've worked on Python. I've worked on R. I I have worked on informatics. I just name it and over uh, this so many years, right? I've worked on many tools and technologies, of which uh, you know I have fallen in love with a couple of technologies, uh, right? I have fallen in love with Hadoop ecosystem, and the other thing I love is Python. Okay, these are the two things I have I fallen in love with and th that's about me I have, I've also worked on worked on from starting an MNC which I started my career with and then moved on to start up created something of my own uh, which actually did not run and then had to go back and work again so 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 that's about it that's that's my introduction I have uh, I have different types of experience of trying to run something of my own to uh, supporting a product uh, to creating a product for someone else so, so that's mine and over a period of I'm, I'm sure with uh, with this much of experience all of you will go through these phases okay so let me go ahead and talk about session objectives uh, I'll give you an introduction to big data and Hadoop understanding Hive and its concepts getting answer to interview questions and Hadoop and getting your doubts clear I, I'll I already know as to what your expectations are from this class and uh, apart from that I would also uh, set the ground rules uh, on on basically on how Hadoop works, right? I'll also set, I'll also tell you things as to how industry perceives Hadoop and big data or Hive, right? As to how Hive is actually being used in industry and and which are the industries which are coming up with a lot of requests on Hive and uh, and a little bit of Hadoop, right? Mostly, this is what I have seen. Okay, uh, I have worked on in in various places. I know a lot of my uh, friends, colleagues uh, working in various uh, different places, right? And I know for sure that most analytics company are using Hive. Okay, Hive in conjunction with uh, Python or Pig. Okay, Hive in conjunction with Pig, Python or R. Right? That that's what they are using. But majorly, many of these companies. The reason why we came up with this course of okay with with this webinar, big data analytics using Hive is because there's a lot of demand for folks who know Hive already. Right? In in analytics field. So. So that's where we came up with this whole idea of uh, uh, doing doing a session on big data analytics. Right. 
Now, big data and its challenges. Okay, uh, even before I go into details of big data, right? So, what is it that we understand with, with big data? I, I mean, there, there is a standard definition to it, but uh, uh, wh what is it that you guys understand from big data? If you can start uh, typing here, you know, I'll be able to read out if I like some of the answers. I'll, I'll read out to all, or else uh, I'll, I'll just go ahead and, and, and start explaining. Okay. Okay. Sudhir says it's uh, unstructured data. Akshata says it's large amount of unstructured data. Okay. So uh, the question to ask there, Sudhir and Akshata is: Is structured data not big data? Just think about that. Ponder about that question. Big and discrete data says Vishal. Huge volume of data. Lot of uh, Amarnath says huge volume of data. Ansul lots of volume with a variety of data format. Well, Surya, you have given me the definition, right? Volume, velocity, and variety. Okay, okay. Real-time data, so Surya, data with giant volume, variety, and velocity. I understand it's mass amount of data, so Melvin. It, see, all of you are correct. Abhijit says and any analysis which cannot be done with normally available technologies, okay? And Vamsi, master data, MDM says Vamsi, okay? Okay, so I'm I'm going to discuss some of the myths relating to this data. Okay, that that's why it was very important for me to know your thoughts on this. Any kind of data, says Siva, which is huge volume and can be converted to information. Large amount of unstructured unstructured data generated at high speed. Okay, okay, Anshul. Now there you go. Right, all of you guys are uh, correct. I mean, to a large extent, you guys are correct. But big data is not just about data, okay? It's not just about large amount of structured or unstructured data. It is a humongous amount of data that's, that's well, that, that's good. But it's not just the data, right? Let's say, for example, I'll give an example stating that, let's say I have a GB of data which resides in my tape, right, from 1930s, and then there has been no change in that data whatsoever, or 100 GB of data, let's say, for example. I have 100 GB of data since 1930s and 40s, and there has been no change in that data since then. That's that's a huge volume of data, but uh, it, does that qualify to be a big data? Mm, I don't know. I, I don't think so. But then, let's say, for example, I have a GB of data, and uh, yesterday I had a GB of data, and I know for sure that today there will be some increment in that data. Over a period in time, Absolutely answered. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get to that. So let's say I have a GB of data, and I have, uh, in you know, I have a probability that in future that data is going to increase and increase by MBs, KBs, and GBs to become so huge and humongous that you will not be able to deal with it. If you have that foresight, if you have that probability, that data can be considered as big data. So it's not just the volume, okay? Volume is one thing, but you need to have velocity associated with that volume, and that's when it's called as big data, okay? And not just that, it's not volume and velocity. It's not one type of data. It's not only type of uh, only structured or unstructured data, right? It can be structured data. It can be semi-structured data. It can be unstructured data. Now, let me go into let me deviate from topic a little bit, and let me talk about what's structured and unstructured data. Uh, now, structured data, I'm sure all of you, you know, either you are studying or either you are working, right? And if you are studying, uh, you would have read a little bit about uh, DBMS, database management system. If you have already studied and working, you definitely know about uh, DBMS, right? You have at least fired one query in your life. You have at least said, select star from table, right? You would have absolutely done that. And even if you have not done that, that's okay. You know, select star from table would retrieve data from table. Right in in your database, normal databases like be it Oracle, SQL Server, MySQL, DB2, Teradata, so on and so forth. Right, wherever you use a query language in order to pull a data, that that's called as a structured query language. And if you have pulled this data from various different sources, right, those data in residing in these relational databases are called as structured data. Right, so they have a particular format to they have a table structure, they have data inside it, so they are nothing but they are called as structured data. What's unstructured data? Any data that you see online, right? Uh, be it text data, be it, uh, be it RFID's data, be it the data that is being sent from Mars by robot, right? That, that's unstructured data. Be it uh, the data from weather forecasting system where, where MBs of data are generated every second. 
So be it that data and these and GBs of data are generated every second. That's big data. Uh, some of the uh, space exploration, deep sea navigation system which generates data. That that's unstructured data. Your music file, your videos file, your Facebook uploads that you have done, right? How many tons of data that you have uploaded so far? I mean, uh, personally, I would have hundreds of pictures there, right? And even uh, videos in in Facebook. I'm sure all of you have an account in Facebook and Twitter. So just think of the amount of data that you are dumping into this system. They all constitute big data and they are all unstructured. Okay, So picture is unstructured data. So that's the difference between structured and unstructured data. Now coming back to the um, main point that we were discussing. Big data is not just about volume, it's about volume velocity with, with its growing and and variety, okay, volume, velocity, and variety. This is the this is the three V definition of big data. Now there is one more V associated with it, which is called as veracity of the data, which means to say that I mean IBM added it later on. So veracity is nothing but you'll have to have proper data in order to do big data analytics. But then uh, if you have data, I have the means to make it proper. So that's what I feel. So that's why the three Vs remains. Uh, the fourth B people, some people use it and some don't. So that's the definition of big data. Okay, uh, Aksata says, what about page clicks, right? This is a very big thing which is coming up, Aksata. You are talking about click stream data. And Vishal, that's right, file plus web plus RDBMS plus GIFs plus images, etc., etc., absolutely, right? So, Aksata, to answer your question, right, click stream data is coming in a very big wave in this industry and uh, people with experience in customer domains uh, who, who do analytics in, in clickstream they are very high in demand. Sensor data, absolutely uh, so the sensor data uh, and volume, velocity, volume, velocity, variety and veracity Siva. It's volume, veracity, velocity, variety and veracity. Yep, yep, Kumar, web server log file. These are classic examples that we are all are talking, right? Web server log file, huge amount of Apache logs, etc. That that we process and so on. So these are actually this has become like hello world of uh, of of big data programming, right? Uh, processing web server log file, your word count problem. They are they are all like hello world pro program. They are the ones with which it all started. Yep, act, actually, yeah, click logs as well. So moving on, okay, guys. Now, big data and its and its challenges. Now, uh, now I have talked about what is uh, what comprises big data, right? Huge amount of data, volume, velocity, and variety. That that's big data. But uh, what are the challenges associated with big data? One, first of all, we have tons and tons of data, but we don't know what what the data help us. For for example, let me talk about uh, one of uh, the industry that I was in long back. Okay, uh, so in that industry. It, it was a manufacturing industry, and in that uh, in that particular place, very big organization. Uh, they had tons and tons of data. The company was there since uh, 70s and 80s, and and tons and tons of data, everyday data. They used to sell something, they used to store those information. But because of lack of any processing, or because I would say lack of any powerful machines, see there are servers, right? There are million dollar servers. You can have hundreds of servers, so on and so forth. But then, at a certain point, right, your server will also be able to only process so much of data. Let's say, for example, my laptop is 16 GB memory, Intel i7 processor, so on and so forth, right? I'll be able to process, let's say, 100 GB of data. Let's say I am able to process 100 GB of data. Extrapolate this to a server, right? Let's say that has 100 GB of uh, memory, RAM, and then I don't know, uh, quad core, octa core, uh, what not processor they have. But eventually, at the end of the day, it will have some limitations, right? So so getting going back to the organization where I was working, that huge amount of data, tons and tons of data, uh, decades of data, 40 years of data, but then we were, when we were doing actually, uh, when we were do, building a prediction system on top of that, or uh, a forecasting system on top of that, we were not able to use them all, right? The simple reason being is that our, uh, our hardware and software not were not capable enough to handle such huge load of data. So what we used to do is we used to take last three years of data, and based on that three years of data, we we used to write programs, uh, you know, which would uh, which would eventually do predictions or which will eventually do forecasting. Let's say, for example, I sold an X item last year, and last to last year it was uh, 1.1 of X. 
and prior to that 1.2 of x and so on and so forth you know we would just use those data we just use those numbers in order to write our, our prediction algorithm but with the advent of big data everything has changed now now they are able to process 30 years of data uh, find a proper pattern to it might actually you know uh, so it ha this this is what happens in a manufacturing industry okay some years are good and some years are bad it's almost like a sinusoidal wave right uh, it's it's all like everything goes around in a circle it started with a good year next year it becomes bad third year again it's it's good fourth year and so on and so forth now now if i if i did not have this data what would i do i would just look at my sales data and then say okay fine uh, this is the sales that happened a couple of years back and this might, what this is what might happen this year right but we would not be taking into account all the different features like let, let's say the inflation the market uh, uh, the uh, tragedies that happen these natural calamities that happen we don't take into consideration those uh, features while we are doing actual forecasting right in those uh, system most of the organizations have changed but there are many which have uh, not changed i mean i think the big ones have changed Change, but but then the medium ones and the smaller ones have not changed this yet because they they still don't know as to how to use big data in order to optimize the whole processes. So big data and mining this big data and its challenges now having this pile of data and uh, trying to bring out uh, something or something useful out of this big data uh, is also called as uh, data mining. Okay, so so it's it's more like uh, if you if I take an analogy. Uh, it's like a diamond mining, right? You go, uh, you you start, uh, uh, you start, you know, digging the whole uh, hill or mountain. You start digging the hill or mountain, and eventually you get a stone. You don't know whether that stone is diamond or not. But then you polish it, you use, you slice and dice it, you mine it, and eventually there will be something, uh, you know, which you get, which which is diamond after having, uh, uh, you know, cut it after having processed it a lot, right? So similar thing with big data, you will get data which is in extreme raw format, right? You don't know what to make out of it. You will pull in those data, you will cleanse that data, you will slice and dice those data, you will fill all those unfilled information over there, and eventually you will have a set of data now which will be fed into some kind of machine learning or artificial intelligence program, and eventually you will have a pattern or a, or a prediction module in the end, right? So that's about big data, its challenges, and, and how do we mine that. Yes, finding amounts and large amount of data, absolutely, etc. Now, now this is done using big data, OK? So whatever I just said, uh, pulling, you have big, huge amount of data, right? Pulling this different, different data from different sources, like let's say, for example, let, let's say, for example, your picture information, your text file, your so on and so forth, right? All those information. You pull in those information, and then who does all this processing for you? It is the big data, or it's Hadoop which does this processing for you. Okay. Now, who generates big data? Uh, your Google, Facebook, LinkedIn. That's what I, I gave an example. Your uh, your sensors, your RFIDs, your deep deep sea navigators, your Mars robot that went to Mars, so on and so forth. Right? They all generate big data. Now, oops, let me go back. Now, yep, yep, Ansul, we can also review uh, what people, that's what I would also uh, talk about uh, sentiment analysis. This is, this is one program that I wrote, wrote right? Recently, uh, I was asked to write a program wherein, uh, you know, uh, for, for famous individuals, big, big net worth individuals, right? I'd have to pull data from all social media for them. Uh, be it Facebook, be it blogs, be it uh, Twitter, etc. Uh, I had to pull all this information. First, first of all, pulling this data from different uh, social media websites and uh, you know even blogs is not an easy. Okay, it takes a lot of effort. Most often than not, in our when you are writing a predictive module or when you are trying to write a machine learning algorithm, right? Uh, the maximum amount of time you spend is in collecting data and cleansing it. Right, that's the 80% of time that, that you spend your time. Okay, 80% is spent on just collecting and cleansing the data, and it's just 20% where you actually write algorithm. So this 80% piece is what Hadoop offers us. Okay, so when I was told to do this uh, to find out, let's say, uh, 10, 20 people, a big net worth individual, I had to do a, an analytics on them as to find out what people think about them, 
what are the what are the tweets they have what do people write about that whether people have positive opinion about them or negative opinion about them so on and so forth right image building is a big exercise when it comes to a big big business okay uh, if your image is bad your business can uh, will, will be doomed eventually right and there will be negative sentiments in the market and eventually your, your organization your company will go down so uh, i was asked to collate this data find out do some sentiment analysis and and i did that so i collected data from facebook twitter blogs uh, just name it you know i i went to multiple places in order to collect the data even the text data that they had lying in the system i took out all those data and then said that uh, and then told them that uh, this is what the people are saying this are the adverse feedback this are the good feedback now based on this uh, you you take your action so that was quite interesting program can traditional warehouse be used uh, in big data environment absolutely so if you can uh, you can plug in and plug out traditional data warehouse uh, in your big data environment as well no it does not need a complete revamp there is something called a scoop you just hit the traditional data warehouse pull the data inside big data and then and then process it now hadoop can be used for easy processing of huge data will answer how right uh, so let, let's let's look into some more details of this now even before i go here right i will talk about this and then uh, uh, for three minutes i'm going to talk about this i'm going to straight away move to something which will actually be helpful to you okay now these are a lot of theories that i'm talking about a lot of good stuff that i'm talking about but it will actually not make sense until unless you are able to actually see it and feel it as to how it looks like how do i process huge amount of data right so now let me go here Okay, Hadoop and its characteristic. The beauty of Hadoop is that it's economical. Okay, like, like I've been telling you that uh, you know all these companies use this big server, right? You might have seen this, uh, all of you, right? If you are working in an organization, okay. Uh, before I go, that let me read what Surya has written. So your machine learning program, and you can use it with big data. Absolutely, Surya. Okay, uh, now. I, I was talking about million dollar server, right? Uh, that is what big companies can afford. I mean, uh, what do small companies like uh, mine, right, do when I don't have that much capability or when I don't have so much of money? I don't have million dollar with me. I just have a few thousand dollars, right? What do I do? I would rather buy commodity hardware, large number of uh, desktop type hardware, right? I, I can still configure a good uh, desktop for around 300, 400 USD. So if I can. Uh, pull in large amount of desktops, connect it, and then create an uh, ecosystem or a cluster of Hadoop, right? That, and if that can give me performance as good as a million dollar server, I mean, it's, it's not bad, right? At the end of the day, I'm able to process huge amount of data. So Hadoop actually provides that. Hadoop provides parallelism using commodity hardware, okay? Okay, so that's what Hadoop provides. It it provides uh, you, it provides it it lets you use commodity hardware as uh, as as cluster of machines, and then with that you are able to compete with those million dollar servers. And I was talking about all of you being in some uh, some kind of organization where uh, eventually every weekend or on on any uh, weekday you get an email saying that uh, the server is going down for so and so reason uh, for maintenance purpose, and uh, you know you'll not be able to. Ex it for some time. There is hardware upgrade, there is software upgrade, there is some kind of uh, memory upgrade, so on and so forth. Right? All of you might be getting uh, this email in your inbox once in a while. Now, the reason they need to bring down the whole system is because that's just one server at the end of the day. And if you have to add more memory, you bring the entire server down, you add more memory to it, and then you bring it up. Right? That that that's part of maintenance purpose. But with Hadoop, you don't need to do that. All you do is uh, there is a plug-in and plug-out. Let me show you as to how to do that, okay? Uh, let me explain to you this, and then let me go and show you as to how actually it's done. So it's economical, it's extremely scalable, I'll show you how it is. It is also flexible because you can plug in and plug out your system, and it's extremely reliable because there is something called as a replication factor based on which each data, each piece of data is stored in at least three different places, okay? Let's say you have one GB of data, that GB of data is stored in at least three different places so that if one fails, the other still remains. Okay. Now, let me straight away go here and let me clear it. Okay. Let me show you as to how it works. Yep, yep, Aditi, I will explain to you as to how it works. Now, 
Now I'm starting Hadoop. Okay, this is how I start Hadoop. When I say start all, it starts starts couple of daemon called name node, uh, data node, the secondary name node, job tracker, class tracker. These are all the daemons. So when you do a JPS Java processes, it gives me all the daemons which has been started. Okay, once this is started. Uh, you know, uh, okay, even before I go in here, there are a couple of things that you would have seen in the past, right? How many of you guys still remember FAT32 or how many of you guys know what an NTFS is? Oops. Now, let me say this, FAT32, right? How many of you remember this FAT32, NTFS and all? Exactly Windows file system, file system says Dinesh, uh, Kumar, Visal, right? So this is actually file system. So just let me extrapolate this to a distributed file system. It becomes SDFS. So SDFS was initially created by Google. Uh, this was Google file system initially, and then Google then uh, made it open source, which became Hadoop distributed file system. This is network file system. Prior to that, this was FAT32. This was file system once upon a time, right? But these days, it's everything is NTFS, and now. For a distributed environment, Google created something called as Google File System, which went on to become Hadoop Distributed File System. Okay, so now having said that, let's go ahead and see as to how do I browse things in SDFS. Okay, now your your file system it resides in some kind of computer, right? Your operating system is on top of your file system. Your Windows was on top of FAT32. Your Windows is, is on top of SDFS. So uh, Windows is on top of your NTFS and SDFS will eventually be on top of, is on top of Linux. You see this, this is my Linux machine, right? Okay, inside my Linux machine I say Hadoop. So how do I browse my Linux system, guys? If, even if you have not seen this already, this is a simple stuff. This is simple stuff, okay? This is how I browse my Linux file system, right? I say ls, I say clear, and then I say my ls minus lt which gives me this i say cat of log and it gives me all the log related information i again file clear because i want to clear of my screen, so on and so forth right but how do i access or how do i browse my hadoop file system i say hadoop fs minus ls this says that i do not want to browse my local file system i want to browse my hadoop file system hadoop fs ls now there are a lot of concepts in the uh, Hadoop like uh, map reduce there are a lot of ecosystem related tools in Hadoop right which uh, which because of lack of time I'll not be explain I'll not be able to explain you that but I want to straight away move to hive so that I, I can give you a picture as to how you can straight away go ahead and start using it. okay when I say Hadoop FS LS there you go it gives me everything inside my Hadoop file system whereas LS will give you something which is in my Linux file system so with this example, you know that my Hadoop or SDFS resides on top of my Linux file system. Okay, that's how it is. So this is Hadoop FS LS. Now, how do I browse my? How do I see the data inside a file in my uh, local file system or Linux file system? I say cat, and then say slaves.sh. There you go. This is the data. How do I browse? How do I browse my data inside my Hadoop file system? Let me first look into the file and then I say Hadoop FS and cat of let's say NFC daily. There you go, this is the data. So isn't it quite simple guys? Okay, this is about how do you browse it. Okay, now going back to my example of why the whole Hadoop file system is extremely scalable and flexible. Uh, I gave you an example of server going down. There has to be a downtime in order to, uh, you know, in order to upgrade it, in order to upgrade its uh, through software, in order to upgrade its memory, in order to upgrade its hardware, right? So how do I upgrade a system from three node server to a hundred node server? This side, how do I do it? I say vi, and then I say slaves. Okay, this is I'm inside Hadoop. Okay, let's let me go inside my conf, C O N F. This is configuration folder. Inside that I say there is something called a slaves. See, let's say for example I want to add 
I see you guys have a lot of questions, but I'll take in some time. I want to add, let's say, a few more systems. 192, 168, 1.1, 1.92, 1.68, 2.1, 1.92, 1.68, 2.2. Let's say these are the three machines that I want to add. That's all. You just open this file, you edit this file, you add the IP address of those machines or the computer names of those machines and that's done. This system has been upgraded. It's that simple guys. Okay, it's this simple Hadoop. It's just that uh, Hadoop pe people think Hadoop to be very complex and and uh, in a very complicated nature programming in Hadoop exercise very complicated nature. But it is actually bringing you down one level down. You write a lot of functions in order to do some kind of programming, right? Let's say for example you want to take a sum of all the numbers. So how how is it that you write? You say in your Oracle or wherever it is, you say select sum or salary from table. This is what you do, right? But with Hadoop, what you have to do is you have to break it down and you have to sum it yourself. Okay. You have to take each salary, salary one is let's say 10, 20, 30. You have to take all this data and you have to do this this thing. 10 plus 20 plus 30. Something of this sort. Okay. It brings you down from functional usage to basic usage and uh, if you know a little bit of program, uh, functional programming it, it becomes much more easier even if you don't know uh, it's okay with little bit of unlearning that you have done or, uh, with little bit of unlearning of the things that you have learned over so many years you know you'll be able to program easily in uh, in Hadoop okay let me go back uh, to wherever I was explaining now that I'm inside my Hadoop my hive runs on top of that okay hive will run on top of Hadoop so let me go straight away into hive Now I'm running high. Okay. The first thing that I would show as to how do I use my commands which I've used in Linux and which I've used in Hadoop from inside my high shell. So the only thing that you have to do is put an exclamation mark and then say list. There you go. It's also listing me. Exclamation mark and then you say clear. There you go. Everything is clear. Right? That's the first step. Okay. With exclamation mark, you can use the command that you were using in Linux file system or in your uh, Hadoop file system. Let, now let me look into your question. Okay, uh, Vamsi, uh, VI command, you just uh, write your, uh, you can write your code in uh, your Linux environment and then using VI editor you can edit your code. Okay. One quick question says, Aditi, is Hadoop compatible with latest Windows OS or is this restricted to Linux? With Hadoop 2.0, it's compatible with uh, Windows as well. But uh, but uh, whenever we are working in an organization, right, we like the security that Linux provides rather than Windows. So we normally tend to use uh, Linux. Where are these? Okay, where are these nodes present, Rohini? If I understand your uh, question, these nodes can be present every a anywhere. Okay, let's say if you are sitting in uh, Bangalore and you have nodes in New York, you can still do that. Okay, but then. Uh, the bad part is you might have to establish a tunnel from Bangalore to uh, New York or you'll have to have a static IP or a computer name which this server can hit. You know, uh, you have no restrictions on where you can place your cluster in, in, in case of Hadoop. Is Net Neteja front end of Hive? No. Neteja is a massively parallel processing system, Sudhi. Okay. Whereas big data, in Neteja the parallel processing, okay guys, uh, if you did not know what Neteja is, Neteja is a parallel processing system uh, uh, from IBM okay it's uh, it's it comes quite costly and the parallelism is n in Neteja is because of its hardware and not because of its software so okay so in case of Hadoop the parallelism is because of software but in Neteja it's because of its hardware these are two different architectures okay uh, we might be comparing apple and oranges Okay, is it possible to export using Hadoop? Yes, it is possible to export using Hadoop. I'm going to show it to you some in some time, Melvin. Is there is there no handshake necessary between the two systems? Uh, you will have to have a handshake, but uh, you have network for handshake, right, Aksata? Okay. Does all the other node have Linux and have Hadoop installed in them? You don't even need to do that. Okay. So that's the beauty of it. Uh, you need to install a couple of daemons called as data node. There is one daemon called as data node, but not the entire Hadoop system. Okay. So let's let let's see this now. Let's let's go on straight away into Hive. Okay. Now I'm inside my Hive cell. Now first thing I told you uh, at the start is Hive is a query language. Now how does 
I look like, uh, let's say I start with, let's say I, did, I do a show databases. My system will be a little slow guys, uh, bear with me with that because uh, it's my local machine, I have a VM on top of it, I have tons of applications running uh, on it and that's why, you know, I, I have, it's a little slow. Now if I say show databases, I get this all, I get all this information, right? right? Now, these are all databases. If I want to create a database, how do I do it? I say create database, create database, and then I say test, right? Or test one. There you go, it, it created database. Now I say show databases. There you go, there is one database for test one as well. Now, I use in an already existing database, which is let's say employer. And now I say show tables inside my this database. Now you see, these are all the tables inside my database. Now I say select star from employees. There you go. Now this looks a little different, right? This looks exactly like SQL. Yes, Siva, it's exactly like my SQL, but uh, that that's a little misleading, okay? The query might look just like my SQL, but when it works internally, hi with a query language, Susmita. Now, Hive is a query language which sits on top of Hadoop. It processes big data. It does not process small data, okay? It is used for processing big, big amount of data. But data output is JSON. Not necessarily Shiva. Data output can be JSON. Data input or output can be JSON, text, your structured database, your XML. It can be anything. Okay, Shiva? So here you see. Now, let me dispel some of the myths. Describe formatted of employees. You have, you would have seen this as well. Now let's see this. What is this? It says this is a location. Okay. Now let me open one more window for you guys. Duplicate session and my Hadoop as a username. Okay. It's still okay it's still connecting. Oh it's taking a lot of time. Okay, Hadoop one two three. There you go. I clear the system. Now what is this? It says that this table is pulling the data from this location. Now let me go and check from this location as to what it has. I say Hadoop FS minus LS. Does this location actually exist? Yes, it does exist. And you see that there are two different data, two different files here. Let me check. Now let me go here and then say cat. You see this guys? It is the same data from this file which is being pulled out and it's displayed here. You see John Doe, Mary Smith, John Doe, Mary Smith. That's from the first file. From my second file, from my second file, there you go, right? So basically John Doe has been repeated twice. That's what I get when I do a select star from table. So what does this mean, guys? It means that the data is being fetched directly from a file. Okay, it is not stored in any structured data. So externally, you might feel that this is like MySQL or SQL, but internally, it is different. The data that is being dumped here when you say select star from table is nothing but the location, and it goes to this particular location and pulls out the data from employee's table. The second thing here, very important thing, I said select star from employees. Now the name of employees is a table here, right? If you go here, the employees is a directory here. You see that? So whatever tables that you are creating in the back end inside HDFS, it is creating a directory. And whatever data you are inserting into this table is getting created as a text file or a JSON file or whatever XML file, whatever you want to show the data as. And initially, I also did one thing, right? I said, was that? I said, select, describe, select star from employees. I said, use employer, right? This is what I said. So what is employer here? Employer.db, that's the database. So database is a directory. Your table name is a directory. Your data inside the table name is a file. Guys, is this clear? 
It can be used in clustering purpose or data transfer error. It can be RDT, it can be used to store data, it can be uh, it, it can be used to process data, it can be used for a, anything that, that you can think of. Okay, Siva, so, so no relations needs to be defined in SDFS, no. The data that you store eventually is written inside SDFS. You see this? Where is the data stored? I say Hadoop, FS, LS, or if you go here, when I say describe formatted, where is the data stored, guys? It's stored inside SDFS. So that this is the relation. In this file, should data be in certain format? The data can be in any format. It has to be it, either it has to be in a normal format, a tab separated format, comma separated format, JSON format, XML format. You have a variety of options. Your data can be in any format, and you'll be able to read the data as you would normally read a table. You can, yes, Vishal, you can create a zzip file using Hive as well. Okay, you can create a gunzip file, you can access, you can read, but reading is a little difficult uh, for some of this. Uh, bzip2, instead of gunzip, we use the uh, compressor format as bzip2 in order to compress this data so that Hadoop can read it. There are some complications there uh, which uh, I will not cover it today, okay, but then, yes, some kind of uh, Compression can be used with Hadoop as well. Absolutely, Rohini. Okay, Rohini is saying if we say select star from employees where name equal to XYZ, then it, it has to check all files, right? Absolutely, but there are concept of partitions there. Whenever you do, and it, it's never an uh, overhead because this data that you see, this data that you see, will reside in different nodes. Okay, Each of this data will reside in different nodes. And when you say select star from table where column name is equal to some value, there is it is going to spawn a thread to, let's say, 100 different nodes. And this data residing in 100 different nodes, it will start searching at once in all these 100 different nodes. So your chances of retrieving the data with 100 different machines is faster than one machine. OK, Rohini? Now I have lots of questions coming in, okay, from Vivek, Avisek, Vishal, Edwin, how long does it take to become a Hadoop developer? Uh, it does not take long. I would say, uh, Edwin, if you know any programming language for that matter, uh, let's say you know one programming language, B, Java, Python, or uh, uh, or any programming language, right? if you know, it will take you around a month or month and a half time in order to become a, a developer. I'm not saying a good developer, I'm saying a developer, okay? Can we have mixed data format? Yes, and, and our, you can have mixed data format as well. Yes, uh, Ansul sequence files. Uh, so we can have sequence files as well. How about processing unstructured data? So this is unstructured data, right, Kumar? Uh, your, uh, I mean, you can call this a semi-structured, your JSON file, your, your XML file, these are semi-structured. But if, if you have completely unstructured data, let's say, for example, like a text file, you have to convert that into certain format and then make sure that you process it with, with uh, hive, okay. In order to process completely unstructured file, we use pig. So we're not talking about pig today. That's why I'm, I'm not taking you through the details of pig. But if you have a completely unstructured file, I use pig, and then once it gets certain structure to it or certain semblance of structure to it, I go ahead and, and create hive on top of it. Okay. You're not able to imagine nodes, right, uh, Rohini? I, I can understand that. Okay. So. The way it works is, uh, let's say, for example, your machine and my machine can be part of a cluster, and your your machine can be one node, my machine can be one node. Okay, so I'm talking about a computer system is called as a node as well. Basically, a commodity hardware, a hardware which which costs very cheap. Are this file indexed? No, these files are not indexed, Aksata, but you can create an index on top of this file as well. But th that's of no use. In, in case of big data environment, right, everything is spawned, okay? From one parent, you know, hundreds of child will be spawned. From those child, further child will be spawned. And then if you, it's, it's like if you're trying to search for X in a pile of data, let's say uh, if you're trying to search for a country in one GB of data. So first of all, that one GB of data will be split into 64 MB chunks, okay? So uh, for example, 20 chunks, right? 20 chunks will be passed on to 20 different machines. One, once those data is there in 20 different machines, 
you would have your search algorithm which will search for country in all these 20 different systems. So that's why it's easy. I'm sure you have, you'll, you'll find it a little difficult to imagine, but just go ahead, do some kind of little bit of research and then come back to Hive, okay? You'll find it, it, it very interesting and very easy. No problem, Rohini. What about replication of data across nodes? Yes, there is something called as replication factor, Praveen. It is each data, each 64 MB of data is replicated across multiple nodes so that you, in, in case of eventuality, in case of failure, you still do, do not lose out on the data. Okay, so by default, there is again, if you go to sdfsite.xml, there is a file called sdfsite.xml, there is something called as replication factor, you just have to mention, it's all configuration parameter, right? You just have to mention one, two, three, whatever you want to, by default it comes to three, and if you have replication fa factor set to three, the data will just be replicated in three different machines. Okay, uh, Anshul, let me explain this to you, Anshul, Vishal, Kumar, okay, Niharika, let me first explain explain to you as to what schema on read is. Read is. So schema on read is, whenever I do an insert on this table, okay, I say load, load data local in path and then let's say I have my data in user Hadoop data and I say employees.txt into table employees. Now I don't have this data, okay. When I do this, right, and so what happens is that it does not validate whether this data, what kind of data it is. Let's say, for example, in my employees table, I have name column, salary column, sub subordinate column, deduction column, right, and address column as well. I have uh, these five columns. Okay, but look at this, uh, the data type of this column, array, map, and structure. Let's, let's come to that later on. When I look into this table, and then let's say this employees table, or by mistake, what you did is, you say, department.txt. Let's say by mistake you are inserting department.txt into employees. It will still go ahead and insert the data because it will not validate for each of this column with this data. It will still go ahead and uh, insert it and eventually when you are fetching the data from Hive, right, you might not get it in a proper structure. Eventually you might get all this data as one column itself. So that's called a schema on read. It's not validating the data when you are inserting, it's only validating the data when you are retrieving the data. Okay, Niharika says, so you, uh, so do you always need to maintain a live connection with all your nodes? Yes, Niharika, that's that's true. If it is across a, across a network, if it is in one uh, place, if you have a hundred node uh, cluster in one place, then then it's all connected by hardwire, right? So you don't have to worry about that. Yes, Niharika, that's true, but uh, it's it's much easier than uh, the way you are thinking it to be, right? If uh, even if it is not able to ping one server, it will eventually ping at least thirty percent server. Yes, you are right. So normally, it so happens that I have one cluster here in India, I have one another cluster in the uh, you know in China, one in US, and so on and so forth. Okay. If nodes, okay, Kumar, if nodes are across continent, big data transfer might take forever. But then see. The big data transfer that happens over network across continents is only as a backup, okay? It is it is better than you losing all the data, right? Let's have one cluster here, one cluster in China, and one cluster in US. So the algorithm is so beautiful that what, whatever data you upload it over here, right? First of all, it will search for the nodes which are nearest to my geographical location. Once it finds that, it loads the data over there. The next step that it does is in order to take any replication which happens in the background which your program will not, your program will not even be disturbed. It will find someone which is nearest to that geographical location. So it will transfer the data from there to let's say from India to China and eventually the last option would be to transfer data from China to US. So all, the, all this has been thought of, the algorithm is quite powerful and, and it handles uh, and, and it hands, handles a lot of things. Okay. Okay, uh, yes, uh, Sumant, uh, see, Sumant, okay, Sumant, it's, it's a very good question. You are saying, uh, so if you insert department data in the employees table, then read the employees table, would the columns of both department and, and employees be visible? No, you're not inserting the columns, uh, Sumant, okay? So when I do this, right, see here, I have already created a table. So I have a table structure for columns, right? 
I have table structure for employees. I already have a column defined. When I load the data, I just load the data. It does not have any columns there. Okay. And now it will be your job. See, uh, this is another way of looking into things, right? So far, because you are coming from uh, Oracle or RDBMS background, right? That's why you are thinking from tables perspective. But in big data, we do not think from that perspective. In big data, we think from data's perspective. For example, uh, how do you normally work in any environment in any, uh, uh, how, how is it that you have designed your table in past? Let's say you work for XYZ company, right? You first uh, think that this might happen, so let me create a table structure. You first think of an employee. This is how you do, right? Uh, let's say I want to create an employee table. You say, uh, I need to create an employee's table. In the employee's table, I'll have a column called name, salary, age, ID, and what else? Okay, address. This is what you think. After you have designed this table, you insert the table, you insert the data into this table, right? Uh, Suman. So, but then when it comes to big data, first of all, you go here and then you check what is the data. Okay? You check the data here and then you say, okay, this is my data. Now because this is my data, I need to create a table based on this data so that I can slice and dice this data. Right? So there are it's it's a different world. It's a different way of looking into these things. Okay, so uh, the, I I understand the point from where you are seeing it. This was the point. Uh, uh, you know, th this this is the vision that I had when 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 I started working on big data. But right now I know that when it comes to big data, I'm not just talking about MBs and GBs of data. Right? I'm not talking about those data which normal database can handle. I'm not talking about those data. I'm talking about so much of data that normal databases cannot handle or normal environment will not be able to handle that. Yes, when you define an input format, right Sachin? So first of all, you look into your data and then you create an input format, okay Sachin? So once you have seen your data, once you have designed what your input format will look like, you'll have to insert data uh, which is of this input format. Now when we go here, right? You see here, when I say select, uh, describe formatted, it says that the input format is a text input format, right? You define an input format first, and then you start inserting into it. Now, how do you do that? You just look into the uh, data first, you design an input format, and this all can be designed, okay? This all can be customized. This all can be customized. Now, let me also take you through some more, uh, this one. We are fast running out of time because I, so this this is what happens, okay? I just want to do now. If I say select count star from employees, when I do that, you see this? It's launching map and reduce. So it so happens that in any databases, it will go ahead, fetch the data directly from your table, and and do a count, right? Here it's going through map and reduce. It says total map reduce job is one, launching job one out of one. It says map map is zero, reduce is zero, so on and so forth. So it will continue until. So what it does is, it will first take the file, split the data in data node. It will take. So this is how it does. Okay. Let's say for example, I have. Let's say I want to count this. I have uh, John, Doe, William. Okay, Tom. Let's say I want to count this. So what it does is, it splits the data John into one system go into one system, William into one system, and Tom into one system. So eventually from this system you'll get an output something like this saying that uh, you know one, 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 one. And in your this is this happens in your mapper. Okay? And this is what is happening in your reducer. It just takes this one plus one plus one plus one. Right? And then you get four as an answer. So you see here, it got four as an answer. So map task is parallelizing the whole process, whereas your reduce task is aggregating the whole process. Okay. So guys, I see, I still see there are a lot of questions that you guys have. Okay, which I might not be able to take it now, but be rest assured that uh, uh, you know we will have your questions answered via email. Okay. If if we feel that uh, that's uh, that's an interesting question, or if those if that question is something which you will not be able to find answer to, we will certainly revert back to you. So this is Hadoop ecosystem guys, we have Hive, we have Pig, we are, only, we are only talking about Hive, we have also discussed a little bit of HDFS to pull data from structured databases, 
we would need scoop and to pull data from some of you already asked me this question regarding how do I pull data from Twitter etc that we use Hume okay and uh, again hive origination these, these are stories the, this PPT will be shared with you you can read about this as well you can read about this and you can also access hive using your hive cell okay these are hive components okay you, you have a meta store now you see this when I say describe formatted it gave me all this information okay this information I can store it in MySQL only the metadata part of it okay if you did not know what metadata is it's the data which describes the data right data of a data is metadata so I can store my metadata by default the database is Derby and uh, you can also make configure it to store it in MySQL, SQL Server, uh, your database, uh, your Oracle, DB2 etc. So this is Hive architecture not going into very details of it. This is top five, uh, top couple of uh, interview questions what is Hive meta store it is possible to use same meta store by multiple users in case of embedded Hive so simple questions right and uh, Last but not the least, okay, the job trends is just uh, here to stay, it's just growing from 2006 to 2014, it's, it's, it's on the upward swing right now. Hello. So that's, that's uh, some more doubts, uh, I'll take some, of the, some more of your questions. So will the class be about how to insert data or the query language that Hive is or step to cleanse the data? So Niharika, the class would be about everything starting from how to set up the system to how would you uh, you know slice and dice the data how would you pull the data to how would you process the data to how would you process using pig how would you process using hive right and uh, how would you process using writing your uh, you know python code sorry guys some of you asked me to so how do i integrate python and hive i did not have time so i could not do that uh, okay sudeep is saying this was amazing yogendra no problem sudeep it's all my uh, all my ple pleasure it's, it's my first time here, says Vivekananda. Is there a way I can ex access the previous recording? Say, okay, now uh, uh, let me, now I will take in your questions a little bit later, but uh, hey Mohit, uh, are, are you there? Uh, I would want, uh, you know, Mohit to take in all of your questions on uh, the courses, etc. Mohit, uh, you there? Hi, Yogendra, I'm, I'm here. I hope guys you can hear me. I hope everybody can hear me, guys. I'm audible. Okay, Mohit, right. I'm going to mute myself, okay, until you need me. That, that would be great, Yogendra, that would be great. So, guys, I'm here to take all your questions related to the course and uh, related to the content and, uh, uh, you know, or, or becoming your learning partner. So, in case you have any questions based on your course requirements or your big data training, I should be here to answer your queries. Now, uh, what I'm also going to do is that I'm, I'm going to share my screen with you right and just give me a second I just try to share my screen with you guys so that okay so guys uh, if you are able to see my screen uh, here's our website and here's a big data and Hadoop course uh, content on our website most of the details are are there and I have questions coming in from Kumar Lama how do you enroll trainees in the US Kumar all that